Hey guys, I'm back with Jim Klugel of Christensen Financial. How's it going, brother? Good, how about you, man? Good, man. I wanted to have Jim back on to basically cover the four most frequently asked mortgage questions. Number one question, do you need great credit in order to qualify for a mortgage? Absolutely not. Uh, so there are gonna be different tiers of credit that are gonna get you different buckets of loan products, and of course your loan terms are gonna reflect that. So. You know, my advice is get to a mortgage professional, let them look at the credit, don't go on Credit Karma, go for a mortgage professional's credit bureau and let them walk you through it. A paper is what, like 680 or 700 and above? Sevens, uh, sevens and above, generally speaking, A paper, 720, 740, sure. Okay, and then let's say, what about uh, 600? What do you qualify for in, in that particular there, range? There are still a lot of loan products out there now that will uh, serve a 600 credit score. It may require some uh, additional down payment, may require uh, you know any number of different things that you might need to do. Okay, but there are a lot of options still out there. So let's say you're under that, um, you know, um, you have some collections, etc. What what's your advice to somebody like that? So when it comes to that, you know, credit review is is so important. There are some things that can be addressed in the credit bureau. Okay. Sometimes it's a matter of hey, I've got really I've got good credit, but all my lines are maxed out. So a couple of strategic pay downs on those bills and you can see a really sizable jump in the score. Okay. That's typically where I would go. And okay. When you get down in that, you know, 580 sub 580, I definitely look at doing a few strategic things to get those scores up and you get them done quickly and rescored even. The second thing a lot of people ask is what are the closing costs that I should expect? What do you what would you say to somebody about that? Okay, so um, until you have an exact property and you can measure the property taxes and the homeowners insurance, you can't really in the title fees because that's a specific title company, some variation to those. So until you have a property, my advice is just plan on it being 3% of your purchase price. So okay. if you're buying a $200,000 house, I, you know, thumbnail version of it, I did plan on having about six grand in closing costs. And that's in addition to your down payment. Some people Correct. get confused with closing costs versus down payment. Now the seller, if you're in the right situation, you can ask for help for some or all of those closing costs, but that's where you come in. Sure. You know the situation. If it's one that's probably going to get some closing cost help, or if you got six people trying to buy the same house, maybe not. Number three, a lot of people are wondering about adjustable versus fixed rate. I mean, in the past, there was uh, a lot of people are going with arms, they, they call them, but it seems a little bit more uh, risky. What, what would you say about that? So uh, I'm a little old school. I like fixed rate if you're not sure what's going to happen, but the arm products actually have a lot of value depending on your situation. If you're going to keep the house for you know, two years and you know you're gonna sell it and take that money to put down on a bigger house, then an adjustable rate is actually a, kind of a smart move. What's that typically about like a half a percent better? Yeah, it's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, okay. about half a percent better. And if you know you're gonna be out of the loan before the fixed rate expires, then it's a great product. Another commonly asked question is when should you lock your rate? What do you think okay. about that? Uh, I've got a definite opinion on that. So yeah. I would never, once you get under contract, I would lock as soon as I can from there. Okay. We're at a, a place historically where rates are great. Um, you know, you figure they, if they're going to change, they're probably going to go up if they're as low as they are now. Mm -hmm. And when you get under contract, as you know, Dave, you start paying for inspections, you pay for appraisals, the money starts going out. And you don't want to have all that money going out when you don't even know what kind of loan terms you're going to get in the end. So I personally, if you have a contract and we've signed paperwork, we're going to lock and make sure it goes through your contract date. If you want more information or have more questions to be answered, Jim's information will be at the bottom. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks. Thanks.